another nice St. Clair River walleye. Hey guys, it's Carl and today I'm going to show you three of my favorite baits for catching these walleyes on the St. Clair River. So I just want to preface this video by saying these are just my thoughts on baits and baits that I actually use and that doesn't make them right or wrong and I know a lot of guys will disagree with my color choices or certain baits and they have their own confidence lures and I completely get that like I, to I totally understand that but if you're unfamiliar with the river and not used to this style of jigging or not sure where to start these are great baits that will certainly catch you some fish one thing that's even more important than the baits we're going to talk about is learning the river and learning how these walleyes move in the river and relate to different structure elements and what they're doing in the river whether they're spawning or feeding or what they're doing if you're not fishing around fish and you're not fishing on fish you're not going to catch fish you have to be fishing on fish to catch fish that's the number one most important thing so spend some time cruising up and down the river don't look for the big groups of boats all the time just to go and and cut your learning curve down graph the river, drive around, look for stuff, and try and find fish. And once you know the river well, and once you learn the river well, and know what these fish are doing, that's when baits become important. But if, again, you gotta find those fish before you can catch those fish. So we'll start with number three, and this is a bait that I, I don't use it a lot, but I always have one tied on because it's really effective in certain situations. And that is when fish are really negative or just won't bite. When you know you're on fish and you can't get them to bite, this is a great way to trigger them to bite and at least scratch out a few bites out of a school. But yeah, there's days when they just don't want to go or you don't have minnows or whatever's going on, they just don't want to bite. This bait can do it. And this is a blade bait. This one's a cicada. I know John Bondi, Bondi bait makes a good blade bait. There's a few different good blade baits like that. But these are really good at triggering inactive fish to bite, especially in cold water. And all I really do with these is I use a pretty heavy one, I drop it right to the bottom, and I just with a pretty hard rip, I'll rip it up off the bottom and then let it fall back to the bottom. But I let it fall on a controlled slack, and that's what's so important. You can't just rip it up and throw a bunch of slack in your line and let it fall, because you'll get bit, you'll never even know the fish was there. But if you follow the bait down, and the trick is to follow it down where you're not impeding the action. So you have to follow it down without keeping too tight of a line. Because if you keep it tight line, it's just going to fall nice and straight like on a tight line. If you keep some slack in it, it'll kind of wiggle around and move and flash around and fall. But you don't want so much slack in your line that you don't feel it. So I call it controlled slack. I'll follow it right back down with just a hint of slack in the line. That way you can feel a bite if, it, if you get one. But yeah, just rip it up and follow it back down. And just that, that quick reaction of the bait just kind of triggers them to bite sometimes and it, it can make a difference it can get some inactive fish to bite so i always have one tied on because a lot of times you can see the fish on a graph you know you're fishing over fish and you just can't get them to go this will sometimes trigger a couple bites and sometimes it'll get the whole school going and active once they see a few fish getting active they sometimes more fish get active and it helps you catch more fish so again it doesn't get a lot of use but always have one on the other thing I do with this bait is I almost always change the hooks. Not many of them come with great hooks, so I will change it out for a, a big must-add wide gap treble or something like that. I always put aftermarket trebles on it with a split ring, not just those looped over hooks that come with a lot of them. Split ring and a big treble and always a snap. I don't need a snap swivel per se, but just a good quality snap on top as well. This is a great package for, again, fish that you know are there and you just can't get in a bite. Sometimes this will do it. Another big one, I think. Pop on the bar? Yeah, those their last few bites have been good and hard. There we go. So what do you mean you put it on the bottom? So next up, number two, is the Angler's Choice Walleye Minner. And full disclosure, I'm friends with Dave, but friends or not, I would still use these baits. The Walleye Minner is just a minnow-shaped bait without an action tail. It's just got like a fork tail. Now, it does have a very subtle action because it's the thinner plastic and it does have a nice little subtle wiggle and wobble. And if you look at a school of shiners and stuff, especially in cold water, they're not sitting there wagging their tails like crazy, right? They're in the current, just a nice subtle little wiggle. And that's what this mimics really well. And uh, it's a good subtle bait, which I really like in super cold water. So December, if we get out in January and February, we use it then. Even into March, I'll use a, a more subtle, not a lot of movement type bait like this. And again, jig it really slow, short little hops, not a lot of action, just keep it really subtle. And uh, that's a bait excels for that. But the great thing about this bait is he's made the head a little bit meatier. So the top head portion of this bait is a lot thicker. So 
Of course, we're using big jig heads like 5 eighths, 3 quarters, 1 ounce jig heads. And when you slide that onto the collar into the head of this bait with a little skinny bait, like a lot of them just have skinny little heads. And when you jam your jig head into it, it all scrunches up and balls up and makes a big mess. And it doesn't hold it very well because there's not a lot of plastic to hold the bait on the jig head. You can see with these walleye minners, the head is quite a bit thicker and it holds on to the jig head really, really well. Um, again, always use a trailer hook with this, like, and I'll try and get the trailer hook way back to right into the tail portion. So as for colors, um, it, when the water is really, really clear, I like to keep it natural. I like Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread Ice. I do like the uh, uh, was it a black shiner with the holographic flake and the black backs. And then when the water is a little more colored and a little stained, you're pimping these much brighter colors. That's that's when they come into play. Devil Fish is really good for uh, you know darker water colors. Or at night, if you end up jigging at night, devil fish, those darker colors, those are really good nighttime colors. I don't use real pale colors at night. I want something that stands out nice against the sand. Yeah, that's number two, the English Choice Walleye Minier. <laughs> Wonder Bread. That's the spear tail, English Choice Spear Tail. Just by the stinger in the top corner there. Look at this fish. All right, well, on to my number one favorite bait. And I actually think I'm gonna throw in a fourth bonus bait for you, just something that's fairly new and, we, and we've and we been playing around with it a little bit. I haven't got a lot of experience with it yet, so I'm gonna show you that at the end. But my number one favorite bait, if I could only use one bait on the river all the time, it's gonna be this. And this is the Angler's Choice Spear Tail Worm. And if you watch my videos and seen my jigging videos, you know I use this worm a lot and it catches me a lot of fish. I have so much confidence in this worm. This is just my favorite bait to use on there for sure. Um, one of the great things about this worm is the head and again it's a meaty thick lots of plastic in the head because again we're using those big jig heads and when you slide this worm over the the keeper collar a lot of these thin cheap worms they just split and tear and rip open where this one has lots of plastic there to go up over the collar and to grip it and hold on it doesn't pull down very easily and it hangs on really really good and these baits, both the walleye minner and the, the spear tail worm, they have scent and salt impregnated right into the bait. So again, if you're not tipping your jig with minnows and worms and stuff for scent, you still have that scent advantage with these baits. So again, I'm always gonna use a trailer hook with this worm and I tie my own trailer hooks up so I have the right length of line and mine attached to the hook bend and go back to the tail. And I always want my treble hook stinger to be right in the tippy tip of this worm. Again, I, I don't want it an inch up, I don't want it two inches up, I want it right in the tippy tip. And that's for these neutral walleyes, these negative walleyes that may just lazily take a nip at it. As long as they catch a little bit of that bait, I'm gonna have hooks in their mouth, I'm gonna catch that fish. So always make sure your trailer's way, 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 as far back as you can get it. And uh, again, I custom tie my own, it's really easy to do. And then you can make them different lengths for your walleye minners, or you can for your spear tail worms, or your swim baits, whatever you're using, you can custom make the length to your bait so you always have your trailer hook right in the tip. The bait comes in tons of awesome colors and of course being a locally made bait, Dave knows the river, he knows the anglers on the river, he talks to lots of guys, he knows what works for him, he knows what works for others, he pours lots of awesome colors that are really effective on this river. Me, myself personally, with clear water, again I'm going to stick to my natural colors so I like um, Wonder Bread Ice, Sinclair River Pearl is probably my favorite color out there of, of all. Um, great white another great color and then when the lake churns up and starts funneling dirty cloudy water down into the river and when the visibility is not that good for the walleyes that's when i'm going to go with devil fish i'm going to go with detroit river browns these darker darker colors houdini not houdini um, bionic tiger pimpin those are some brighter colors that work in dirtier water um, might mix up the jig heads might use a, a brighter colored jig head i never mentioned that jig heads i'm a kind of a match the tail kind of jig head guy so when I'm using my light whites and pearls and silvers I want a white silver jig head um, sometimes I'll use black especially on the black back to, like the Wally Minners that that black shiner I'll use a black jig head there but most of my jig heads are white or black or silver they're all pretty natural I also really like eyeballs and I don't know if that's just a thing for me but I want eyeballs on my jig heads I don't really like jig heads without eyeballs I buy some without 
eyeballs and stick my own on it, but I always want to have eyeballs. And that's whether that makes any difference or not, I cannot tell you that, but it makes a difference to me and I feel way more confident with it. So I always use jig heads with eyeballs. So yeah, Angler's Choice Speartail Worm, this is my favorite bait by far. And I, it just catches so many fish for me. I have a hard time not using this and uh, just so much confidence in it. It's a great worm. Fish. That's a heavyweight. Oh, that's a super. Oh, well, not really. Ah, just... wow, what a fish! What a fish! Look at that. And now for that bonus bait. And it's another Angler's Choice bait, I know. They make lots of great baits that work great on the river, but I, I really do like Angler's Choice baits. But this is the Angler's Choice AC swim bait. And it comes in a couple different sizes. And its body shape is a lot like the Wally Minner, except for instead of having that fork tail with the subtle action, this has a really big paddle tail with lots of action. This is nice, gets nice and slim through there, so it got lots of action, lots of wiggle to it. And again, this will not be a cold water bait for me. I do not like a lot of action when the water is super cold, but when the water is warmer and the fish metabolism is speeded up, they're gonna be eating a lot more. They're gonna be aggressively hunting down bait. And I think this is gonna get bit a lot better than when they're looking for activity and stuff. I've only got to try this bait a couple times jigging and I did catch fish on it for sure. I think it's really gonna excel though when the water warms up. I have done really well with it night fishing offshore, like just casting it offshore at night. I've caught lots of fish on it doing that. But as for jigging, I've only, again, I've only had it out a couple times so it has caught fish. But again, I'm thinking more when the water's a lot warmer and they're looking for more activity, I think this bait will excel then. So. So yeah, really looking forward to jigging this bait when the water warms up. So. so I really hope you'll stick around and check out the channel. There's a playlist with all my St. Clair River videos in it. Um, there's walleye jigging, night jigging, night fishing from shore, walleye harne worm harnessing, smallmouth muskie, lots of St. Clair River videos on there. Plus all my other adventures all over the place too, catching all kinds of bass and all kinds of stuff. So there's over 100 videos to check out. So be sure to check out the channel some more. I hope you learned something from this video and I hope it helps you catch some more fish next year and I hope you'll be responsible with those fish. Um, a lot of guys think this is an infinite fishery and there's just so many fish and we can't hurt it and, and again I don't disagree there is tons of fish in this river and lots to be caught but if we keep putting eight nine pounders in the live well that are full of eggs it, it's just not going to last. There's no need to keep those big giant fish. They're the ones that are the workhorses they're laying all those eggs and producing all these big fish. There is tons of eater fish and I love a fish fry like the next guy and there's lots of good eating sized fish but be sure to let those great big females go to do their job and then we'll have an amazing fishery for years and years to come. So again, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you subscribe to the channel and I hope I'll see you out on the river. Swing him in. That's a good little eater there.